Well, good afternoon, everybody, and um, thank you for your uh, very good presentation, um, Wendy. And it's good to be part of the, the Third Asian Pacific. Um, I'm going to be talking about the city of Leeds, which uh, started out as an industrial town and city, like so many in the north of England, and it didn't actually move as far forward as it should be in terms of making itself um, a good place to be. Um, until that is, um, we had a report and I will move on to hopefully the next. Yes. Leeds is the third largest city in the UK and it lies um, in the fourth most populous area. The area has about two and a half, 2.6 million people in it. It is one of the most diverse economies in all the UK uh, employment areas um, and has, which is rather good, um, one of the most diverse, uh, fastest growing private sector jobs. That said, the character of the city is diverse in appearance and density, but the public realm, to be perfectly honest, did lack distinctiveness. Um, people, as in most cities, can in, enjoy the city most by walking around it on foot or possibly by a bicycle. But Leeds was fundamentally designed around vehicles, um, and that is not very helpful. The crunch came in 2014 when a report by the Public Health England um, on air pollution in cities and supported by the the World Health Organization, found that over 320 people per year who lived or worked in the city centre in Leeds died from diseases caused by air pollution. And that triggered a lot of very quick rethinking, thinking how on earth can you have a city where you know um, that that number of folks um, are going to die. So things moved on. And yes, it's easy just to draw cartoons of, of situations, um, but it doesn't make them uh, really uh, any better. That is the center of Leeds. And the, some of the areas I'll be talking about is, is the head row, um, which is that road there, um, Cookridge Street, which goes up there, and one or two other places, Bond Court there, um, the, the Sovereign Square down there and the City Square. Okay. As a result of the port, uh, the city produced an Our Open Spaces strategy. And the strategy embodied a vision for the creation of a vibrant, inclusive, um, and, and, and much more pleasant world sort of centered city, as they called it. And it was really the whole object was to make the public realm um, worth being in. Trouble is, you actually can't do that overnight. You can get a um, um, Harry Potter stick and wave it, but it actually doesn't work that quickly. And the first scheme in order to get people convinced that things were going to happen was really getting rid of a car park and turning it into a, a city park. It was the first park that had been built in Leeds for decades. Um, and the second uh, was uh, a scheme called Bond Court, which we will see in a moment. This was the Our Spaces strategy. And the reason it took a number of years to get going was really because of public engagement. It is so important not to just to say, right, now we're going to do this um, and people are not involved. We have people from 170 different countries living in Leeds, and there are 140 languages um, spoken, not by everybody, as you can imagine. Um, so it is a very versatile city, and it takes time to engage with people. I use the word engage rather than consult, because consulting communities tends to be top down. And when you've done it, you sort of say, oh, well, we've done that, and you carry on. Engagement is what it actually says. You engage with people and they have a say. So the first square that we built was Sovereign Square. Um, 
it was fairly quick off the ground. Uh, we got a lot of money actually from private sector because they said, wow, you're prepared to do a, um, a new square. Uh, and the car park that it replaced actually made a lot of money for the council, but I'm glad to say they sort of said, no, no, the square has got to be done and we've got to do it as quickly as we can. Um, and it worked well. It had a large rain garden, which you can see going off into the, 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 the distance there. That little girl isn't about to do something terrible by leaping into that water. Um, that water is actually only 50 millimeters deep. Uh, and it was put there so that children could upset their parents by actually jumping in it and getting wet. Um, because again, how you give uh, pleasure, if you like, or potential pleasure for young children in the city. It isn't just about shops and, and trees, although that is critical. Um, it's also about what you do if you're a little kid. But trees were very much part um, of the square uh, and it proved to be very successful. And the good thing about it was that people were very happy with the fact that uh, the council actually did what it said. It promised to do it and it actually did it. And that um, helped a great deal. We then moved on and built Bond Court which was quite easy to do because again, it was in a slightly commercial area and uh, art started coming in. Uh, art is the tree of life, if you like. Uh, but again, a lot of trees were planted and we started, started changing the species a lot because a lot of the trees originally were Pyrus caloriana um, and Fraxinus uh, angustifolia raywood, which of course was a problem because we have ash dieback disease. Um, but we started expanding the, the species quite dramatically. Very humble little space, but it's amazing how it actually changed things. That was a large London plane tree, which we put in the ground. It's got 28 cubic meters of rootable area. It started growing the very day we put it in there. And what was originally just a gray little bit that people nipped through as quickly as possible, all of a sudden people were happy to sit there in this, this, this one admittedly fairly large tree and it cost a lot of money to put it there. But then cafes started opening up and all sorts of things. So it was amazing what um, just uh, planting a large tree can actually do. The other thing that we had to start doing was controlling vehicles. And the principal city streets are the key points of arrival for so people entering the city by bus or train. Um, they're deemed to be part of the highway infrastructure and, and therefore there were far too many vehicles on it. High traffic volumes and noise and air pollution. Now, many of these streets are dominated by pedestrians uh, together with an increase in the planting of trees and we have an amazing park and ride system, which I'll show you in a moment, which is actually the only one in the UK to be totally solar powered. And all the buses that take people from there into the town center are electrically powered. And so it can be done. This was a street which was pedestrianized. It's not perhaps quite as, as, as designed as some people would like, but it was important to keep um, people being able to move. The building on the right hand side um, is a big hotel who were against it originally. Now they just say it has changed the, the whole way our hotel works, the number of people that come here. Um, so just booting the cars out and bringing people in um, helped amazingly. A place called Corn Exchange, which is that large building in the middle, which is what it says really, it's a very old market going back for a oh, very long time. It isn't now, it's full of very small, but, but rather fine little uh, shops. The rents are low, so if you or I wanted to start up a shop to sell whatever it is, that's probably the good place to start. Again, vehicles were, were pulled out, public transport goes down that road there. All these areas, which used to be for vehicles, cars have been booted out, it's pedestrianized um, and more trees being added. The hedgerow, which I mentioned, 
uh, previously, um, has still got public transport down the middle of it. Um, it had four lanes of traffic before, it now only has two. Footpaths have been trebled in width and tree planting, um, as you can see, has gone on. Again, the retail side of things has just rocketed because people have got the time to actually look. Um, and as the trees grow, um, it will get even better. The park and ride I mentioned uh, is a place called Old Oldwoodley, which is on the edge of Leeds. Um, but you can see there's one wonderful uh, proposed big, well, in fact, it's been built now, tree um, in the middle there. The trees all around it and the, the, the woodland all around it, it was an absolute gem. Um, and again, it's absolutely full of cars and people now who think, yeah, yeah, well, I can drive in from any part of, of the Yorkshire, North of England, park there, get in the town, um, buses, uh, there isn't actually a timetable because they run every few minutes or so. So again, um, the cost of it, which initially people thought, oh dear, this is gonna cost. They've said, no, it cost a fortune, but look what the benefits have actually brought to the city. Um, so there's a lot more happening now. As I say, it took several years to actually get going, um, but the program um, is moving fast. Um, the greatest thing, which I have to confess did surprise me a little bit, but I was, I won't go into it, but slightly involved with this. Um, this is City Square. This is the central square in the middle of the city. Uh, the station um, is down here. People come out and move through here. Retail area is over here. That, for anybody who lives in Leeds, was the center of the city. Um, it was terrible. It was traffic was all the way around here. You really didn't, you could just about get across the road and then you, pollution, it was dreadful. So all traffic has already been booted out. We haven't actually built this yet. This is called the Glade. And this area of Yorkshire, once upon a time, was the forest of Loides, which goes back to Celtic times. Now, the centre of that forest is now going to be City Square. We're going to be planting 170 trees um, in the square, and they go up uh, the adjacent streets. As I say, the, the hotels and the cafes are, as you can see, moving out. Um, and it's going to be a wonderful space. Um, I was very surprised that, the, that, to be honest, the politicians sort of said, what, this is a central square and you're going to turn it into a, an urban forest? And he said, yeah, As you've got to approve it. And they did. So that was brilliant. We are going to do to um, double the canopy cover of the city to 19%. That's a lot lower than some cities in Europe. Um, but at the moment, uh, or when we started out, the tree cover was only about 6%. Um, it's now well over 10% now, um, and obviously is going to go further. As Wendy mentioned, um, I'm chair of the White Rose Forest. Leeds, as you can see, is, is in the middle there. Uh, and we cover over 9,000 um, square kilometers of, of the north. Um, and things are going very well. We've got 3.5 million pounds um, from the government this year. We've got 254 sites, which we're planting up, uh, covering 850 odd um, hectares. A lot of those are peri-urban woodland, round leads, but also a lot are street trees and we have a green streets project uh, as also going into the areas of dense terraced housing around the, the, the edge of Leeds and the old industrial areas and basically retrofitting them because if you live in those areas you are just as entitled to the urban forest as anybody else. So there'll be certainly the old bits of brownfield land, we're putting in mainly mini forest because a lot of the streets are too narrow to put, put street trees in, um, but it's on the go. So the Our Spaces project uh, strategy is ambitious, but it does present a realistic picture of what Leeds will look like, as Leeds says, a world-class city. It will be substantially greener, it will be better connected, 
and it will be a much cleaner city and more accessible to people and recognizable as a unique place to be. It does take time, but it's getting there. And certainly by the time the program is finished, which is 2030, um, things are going to be um, much better indeed. Uh, and as you can see, things are moving forward quite well. The biggest benefit, um, and I'm speaking personally, I suppose here, is, oh, get rid of that, is that city design used to be like that. People pulling in different directions, highways, planners, developers, urban designers, architects, urban foresters, all pulling in different directions. And some poor souls just trying to pour glue into it and bring it together. It has changed. And this, this our places and spaces strategy has changed it. We're now all working together and pulling in the same direction. It's easy to sell to professions. We've all got a benefit in success. None of us can just succeed on our own, just pursuing our own narrow way. We actually have to work together. And I'm glad to say this program has, has really helped that. Thank you for your time.